Yes, I'm starting off my Spice Rack video with a not-so-subtle reference to those two wonderful troubadours, Simon and Garfunkel, but only folks of a certain age like myself know who those guys even are. So let's continue by looking at these pictures of Spice Chaos. Yes, Spice Jars all over the place. If this is your kitchen, I've got the solution for you. I call it my, well, <laughs> retractor rack for lack of a better name. But anyways, here is my solution for organizing the spice jars in your life. And as you can see, this spice rack handles 30 spice jars. Now you can keep your spices organized. You can immediately see what you have on hand or what you need to run out and grab. You can let this retractable spice rack sit in a cascading form like so while you're cooking, or you can leave it unretracted, leave it in the cabinet so you can reach for often used spices like these right here without having to pull the whole thing out. And when you're done grabbing spices, you can hide this entire spice rack behind a cabinet. So let me show you how I built this retractable, expandable spice rack contraption. And then you too can remove the chaos from what tends to be the most disorganized portion of anyone's kitchen. We're going to start off by building the actual spice racks. Now what I'm going to do is build three separate racks and each rack will hold 10 spice jars. I feel that 30 spice jars is, well, more than enough spices for the average kitchen. I mean, if you have more than 30 spices that you're working with, you're probably working in a commercial restaurant. Each one of the three trays or three containers of our spice rack system is going to require a pair of these side pieces. So I've pre-cut a half dozen side pieces. They're ready to go, ready to drill, ready to configure. And they're using the same stock that I used to cut these three bottom pieces, a bottom piece for each tray. So same stock for the bottoms, same stock for the side pieces. In this case, I'm using hardwood maple. You may want to use walnut or oak, whatever you prefer, but hardwood maple is probably one of the easier hardwoods to work with, and it really produces a beautiful finish. This is the front section. I've got three of these, one for each tray, and this is the back section, three of those, one for each tray. This is a very thin maple plywood for the fronts and the back. Here we've got maple hardwood levers. We've got four of these. We need a pair for each side of the system. The sides for each one of your trays or containers will require the most of your time. Here's a pre-cut side. It's basically a blank. Now I'm using Craig jigs to attach the sides to the bottoms. There's a Craig jig hole already drilled. It's going to help you a lot to have a drill press because you'll need to drill a cavity for the machine bolts that you use to attach these sides to the lever arms. And then you'll drill a second hole, as you see here, all the way through so you can slide your bolts through. Here you see the indentation that was cut with a bandsaw to attach the fronts. Now the way I measured how to cut the indentations on each side was first I measured the width of the plywood stock and I just kind of lined it up and I allowed for the kerf or the width of the bandsaw itself that way the indentation would be just right. And then I was able to cut deep enough for the width of the plywood. And then the way I set the fence for the height of the plywood stock, same idea, just in reverse. I took each front piece and measured it, allowing for the width of the bandsaw or the curve of the bandsaw. Set the fence and then cut accordingly. And then the finished result was a perfect indentation on each side piece for each container or each rack. So that's where you would cut your height. And then when all is said and done, you've got a perfect indentation like so. Now we can check everything by doing a mock assembly. I've got two finished side pieces. All your visible work will be inside of the rack so not necessarily visible and then here we've got the front piece and you can see it fits quite nicely into the indentations on the right side and also on the left side so we'll pan over to the left side and check and yep it fits there too maybe do a little sanding work to make it perfect 
Here's a demonstration on how the five pieces for each rack fit together. There's your sides, of course. You can see most of the work is located pointing inside. So these will be covered up by spice jars. You won't really notice the work on the insides of the sides. And you can see how the front just slips into that indentation right there. And of course, you can just use some small screws to fix those fronts in place. And then the backs attach to the sides and the bottom piece like so. Now I pre-drilled holes for my containers and I used countersink drills so that I could completely sink the wood screws into the back for a better look. Actually the backs you won't see them but it just gives it a nice finish. You can see countersink holes all around. Now when I assembled my spice racks, I started by attaching the side pieces to the bottom piece using Craig jigs and then I attached the front piece of maple, thin maple plywood. It's lower than the back piece so you can read the spice jar labels. And then I attached the back portion of the spice rack using really thin nails. I actually pre-drilled the holes for those nails because I didn't want any splitting of the plywood. It's, it's pretty thin. So you don't want to risk splitting the plywood. And you want to be careful where you actually place these nails. And I'll show you why that's an issue later on in this video. Let's take another look at the inside of this particular spice rack before we attach the lever arms and before we fill it up with spice jars. Once we have our three spice racks built, the next step is to attach a couple of levers on either side of each of these three spice racks. So I'm going to use these holes that you see that I pre-drilled before assembling the racks. And I'm going to attach these four lever arms like you see right there. There's going to be two of these arms on each side, one at the top, one near the bottom. And as you can see, each rack will have a hole drilled for each spot on each lever and what that will do will give us the ability to cascade these racks. I'm going to use these quarter dash 20 by one and a half inch carriage bolts and I was fortunate that these bolts come with nuts already packaged so that's cool and then I also need a washer for each uh, bolt and nut assembly and I'm using number 12 washers like you see right there now the lever arms are maple hardwood just like the rest of the spice rack assemblies. You can see if I flip these over, I had to do some slicing and dicing on my table saw, which meant I got some burn marks. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm using the side that faces out that doesn't have the burn marks. Now I'm going to place my carriage bolts like so, and I'll flip this lever arm over and put in the washers on the other side and then I can tighten the whole assembly with nuts in the pre-drilled holes on the sides of the spice rack. I feel like I'm playing a miniature version of that carnival game where you toss a ring over a clown's head or over some sort of pyramid or something like that and basically you keep missing and then you keep plunking down five bucks and then the carnival guy just laughs at you. But anyway, <laughs> once, once we get the bolts in place then we just position the bolts so that they attached to the sides of the spice racks and then I can use nuts to tighten the whole shebang all together and of course we're going to make sure we don't have those burn marks facing out and it gets a little bit tricky you've you've got to you know work things around a little bit to get those bolts positioned just right but once you get them positioned then you can you know finish the assembly tighten down the nuts and you'll have cascading spice racks. Before I built this whole assembly I actually created a cardboard prototype because as you can imagine there's so many variables, so many measurements uh, that are involved to make sure that your spice racks cascade just enough but not too much and that the whole assembly fits into the cabinet. Make sure you check out the video description where I outline all of the parts, all of the hardware, all of the measurements, and if you have any questions about any measurement I may have missed, just shoot me a comment. I'll try to answer it. As you can see here, I'm tightening everything down. I used carriage bolts with Phillips heads. Makes the assembly process a little bit easier. And then 
once everything is assembled, we will have a cascading spice rack assembly. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I placed nails in the back portion of this particular rack, the rear rack, and I didn't really think that, hey, maybe the nails would get in the way of where I wanted to put the carriage bolt. So I had to <laughs> remove these nails, then reposition them so they wouldn't get in the way of the carriage bolts. You can see the end result right there. The nails are well away from the bolts. <laughs> anyway, plan accordingly. When all your spice racks are linked together with the levers, they're going to operate like so. You can see they're cascading like a staircase and going flat so they slide in and out of your cabinet. So here's a overview, here's a side view, and here's a bottom view, just in case you're curious. And away we go! My retractor rack uses a pair of devices called extension dampers, which are similar to these hydraulic pistons that help to raise and lower hatchbacks or tailgates on cars and trucks. Extension dampers, however, work kind of in reverse. They actually provide a type of resistance of sorts for my retractable expandable spice rack design. And these things keep the whole, well, whole assembly from crashing against the cabinet. They just make it a little easier to operate. I'm going to show you why the extension dampers are so important by giving you a demo with the spice rack while it's empty. So we're just going to slide it out of the cabinet like so and then let go. And you can see the assembly doesn't drop like a rock thanks to those extension dampers. I mean, if those weren't there, you'd have, a, you'd have just like a wham, a crash um, against the cabinet. So the levers, the wood levers that is, the extension dampers and the drawer slides all work in concert with each other to create a fully functioning spice rack assembly that keeps your spice jars, you know, organized, but also within easy reach. The extension dampers provide enough resistance to prevent even the fully loaded rack from collapsing like, <laughs> well, like a rock, like I said before. And you can pretty much one hand this whole assembly. I mean, you can, you know, slide it out and just let go and uh, slide it back in. So you can literally access 30, that's right, 30 spice jars with just one hand. After we assemble the spice racks and the lever arms and the extension dampers, the next step is to attach these blocks of wood that you see right here on either side of the rear spice rack. These blocks of woods allow for the attachment of the drawer slides to the entire assembly. And the only place where the drawer slides are attached to the assembly are on these blocks of wood. And that's why you see overkill with the bolts and the screws <laughs> on this particular still photo. But bottom line, I was trying to make sure that these pieces of wood would handle the weight of three fully loaded spice racks. After some trial and error, I ended up adding this very thin carriage bolt that you see right there which not only added reinforcement to the Phillips head screws, but also prevented the drawer slide arm from pivoting up and down as I'm trying to demonstrate right here in this shot. Now, probably one or two Phillips heads in the back are sufficient. I don't think you need all three, but make sure you add carriage bolts on either side of this assembly. Let's take a look at the other side of the assembly. You can see I've got the same configuration, a couple of Phillips heads. But the more important thing, the carriage bolt is there as well. So now the drawer slides will stay nice and stable. And there's also added support for an assembly with three spice racks with 30 spice jars. As you can see, the carriage bolt attaches to the actual side of the rear spice rack. And it won't get in the way of the jars. Let's have a look at the whole assembly from above where I want to show that there needs to be a little bit of distance between the sliders and the carriage bolts and the extension dampers. And that's what this piece of wood is for on each side of the assembly. That gap and those blocks of wood are pretty crucial for the whole design. Now, when we go inside the cabinet, you can see I've got two pieces of wood, one on either side of the cabinet that I'm using to mount the drawer slides on. And I fastened some angle irons on the back of these pieces of wood. I didn't use any fasteners, 
on the front. I wanted these pieces of wood to have some give near the front, as you can see right there. Um, and I'll explain later why that is. And you can see I've got the drawer slides mounted on these pieces of wood. And now that we've got all this constructed, I can mount the entire assembly that holds the spice racks into the cabinet. Placing the rack assembly into the drawer slides in the cabinet, pretty much just like installing a regular drawer. You just got to line up the drawer slides like so. Sometimes it takes a little bit of finessing. And once you get everything lined up, again, just like installing a regular cabinet drawer, you can just give the whole assembly a little bit of a shove. And once it's in there, you're pretty much done. Should you ever need to remove the assembly down the road, you can just remove it like you would a cabinet drawer. Just slide it out and remove it. Even if you're mounting these spice racks in a confined space, you'll still end up with two and a quarter inches of space above them to mount a small shelf if you like. The arrow here points to movement on the pieces of wood where I mounted the drawer slides. You'll see the fronts of these pieces of wood move a little bit. They flex a little bit. That's why I didn't fasten those pieces in place at the front with angle irons like I did in the back. That flex allows the complete system to move in and out of the cabinet with ease. I placed wooden feet like you see right there at the bottom of the front spice rack just to allow for some space to grab the front rack and pull it out and push it back into the cabinet. And I also placed these chair glides on either side of the front spice rack as grips but turns out they're not necessary. I hope my expandable retractable spice rack design helps you keep your kitchen organized and your cooking adventures delicious. If you like this video please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.